Thank you, Senator Peters. Senator Heller. Mr. Chairman, thank you, and thanks for holding this hearing as we uh, continue to work in this committee and try to bring more spectrum to the market. I was lobbied out in the hallway on my way in, um, and I was requested to ask one of our witnesses if any of them know where Tom Brady's cell phone is. <laughs> but I think I'll, uh, maybe that's a, that's a hearing for another day. But anyway, thanks for holding this hearing. Mr. Chairman, when you have a hearing on that, could I have equal time? <laughs> <laughs> controversy, controversy. But anyway, yeah, we all know that Spectrum provides Internet access in places that wireless uh, won't reach and provide Internet competition um, where it does reach. This is about innovation and ensuring competition in the marketplace so that it exists to empower consumers in, in dictating price, speed, and efficiency in the data plants. As we continue our work, it's my opinion that these are the beacons we should continue to reach for. I know it's not easy, and that's why I appreciate the Chairman staying focused on clearing more spectrum and holding this hearing today. And I believe that after the scheduled 2016 broadcast incentive auction is up, uh, we probably and will not have anything in the pipeline to follow. And we cannot close the digital divide and provide an environment in which services will get better if prices lower if we don't have more spectrum coming to the market. The digital divide is something that severely impacts my home state of Nevada. As Political wrote uh, extensively on this uh, this week, and many of us have known for a long time that money provided to RUS through the stimulus has been an unmitigated disaster. I was adamantly opposed to the stimulus, and I'm not about to go into all of that, but we have to admit the inability of RUS to get these projects going should not be a surprise. It's the same argument that was raised, of course, in 2008. It's not realistic to expect any company to lay wireless across rugged terrains like Nevada to bring broadband to rural areas. Instead, we need to think critically on how we bring faster Internet to these areas, and I know the discussion today can provide and has provided some answers to that. Now, while today is about the long-term need for Spectrum, a lot of questions remain about how Spectrum auctions are conducted and how to enhance the benefit of these auctions. So I hope that we have the opportunity as a follow-up hearing to learn more about and how to address some concerns that will remain. I want to give a couple of examples, and uh, Ms. Baker, I'm going to direct them towards you, if I may, just a couple of examples of the problems that exist, uh, and this is in line with uh, what Mr. Daines had to say earlier about a rural state. Uh, people don't uh, realize when you think of Nevada, you probably think of Las Vegas or Lake Tahoe, but uh, it's a vast state, 110,000 square miles. Uh, Las Vegas is in about 5,000 square miles of it. Uh, Reno, but uh, Reno, uh, a couple thousand square miles, but 110,000 square miles is a lot of space. Recently, and I say recently, a few years ago, I was in a motorhome uh, driving uh, with four children in the motorhome, and it broke down. Now, I'm a pretty good mechanic, but that day I wasn't good enough. Uh, fortunately, we were pulling a vehicle behind it, got in the vehicle, drove down the uh, drove down the road for two hours before we could get a signal uh, on the cell phone. I would suggest that if someone were to do that today and break down in the same spot, they'd still have to drive two hours to find a cell phone uh, signal in order to get the help that they need. Another example is I have a son and his daughter that have 1.5 million followers um, on Vine. Now, if I was driving through Nevada, I probably couldn't get the weather. I probably couldn't get uh, the news, and I probably couldn't see their latest Vine uh, because there just isn't uh, the access uh, to uh, that information. So I think the key to it is, is what I'm trying to say is that we can talk about Spectre, we can talk about all these issues, but the problem uh, foremost is the ability um, to actually have um, the uh, access uh, to it. And so I, I guess in line with the, what Mr. Dane said, um, we have 85% of the property in the state of Nevada's federal lands, and that's the problem. What can we do, Ms. Baker, what can we do with the, with the vast holdings that the federal government has and the ability to get wireless service uh, to uh, rural portions of the state? Um, that's a great question. And so, um, and I do know that Nevada has disproportionate at 85% of federal lands. Um, I think the country average is 30 percent. So you are great, greatly over there. So I think you should turn out to your colleague, uh, Senator Johnson, and thank him because he did question the GSA nominee on federal lands. I understand you got an answer back from her last night about 
making siting on federal lands a priority. I'll stick around for this question. This, this committee did a great <laughs> job in directing the FCC to, in the Spectrum Act to, um, uh, to expedite siting on non-federal land, and we need to finish the job and get GSA to actually enact their promise. I know that Klobuchar and McCaskill have a bill. <coughs> Senator Johnson, you've been on this. Um, expediting the siting on federal lands when it, it, it can take months, it, so it should take months instead of years, um, would be a great big help, I think, to states like Nevada. Okay. Do you have a comment? Um, I, I agree. <laughs> How about that? Um, <laughs> Uh, federal lands are about 30 percent of the lands in this country, obviously a lot more in Nevada. And if we want to get deployment there, we're going to have to bring the cost equation to a new place. Because if you don't have a lot of people, it's really hard to spend the money to deploy because there aren't a lot of people who are going to be able to use that service. So one of the things we can and should do is make sure that the federal government manages those lands in a way that accelerates deployment and doesn't impede it. Commissioner, thank you for understanding the problem. Can I just say that um, this has been a problem since I was at CTI 17 years ago, and I think, Senator Markey, you are going to remember trying to get siting in Rock Creek Park. So while we have some commitments from the GSA, this is something that I think we should probably stay on. Ms. Baker, thank you. <coughs> Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Senator. 